Hello, Dr. Darrow. <laughs> Hello. How are you doing today? <laughs> doing all right. Is this your first AGU? You've been here it a few is, times? No, it's my first AGU. I've gone to other conferences, but never this one. It's pretty pretty amazing. It's very pretty large. Yeah. It is. It is. Um, so you're presenting a poster down here about your research into uh, a debris lobe. And talk to me a little bit about what a debris lobe is. So frozen debris lobes are slow-moving landslides in permafrost. That's my working definition. So we find them in the Brooks Range, and there's several along the uh, corridor for the Dalton Highway. And so you mean slow moving, like can you watch it? Can you sit there and you know, uh, sip your coffee and watch the thing coming of, down the hill? Some of them are moving fast enough that in the summer you might be able to do that. Um, the one that's closest to the highway right now is moving five to six meters a year. Uh, the rate changes every year. Uh, the fastest moving ones that we've watched are moving 20 meters a year right now, but there has been from handheld GPS measurements, we've seen 50, 50 meters a year on one of them. So that one, in its heyday, I think you could have seen it move. And so it's underground as it just goes and goes and goes. What happens to trees, dirt, rocks on top? Yeah, it's on, it's on the surface, right? So it's a big lobe of material that's coming down the slope and the trees, they have a, a hard go of it. They're, they try to stand up straight, but they get knocked out of whack. And, and they show a lot of evidence of the movement. They crack, uh, they fall over, they split in half. Uh, my colleague, I have a picture of him. He's a tall man. He's standing in a tree that's been ripped apart. So they show a lot of the dynamic nature of the surface. That's a pretty powerful underground force. Yes. Yeah, that mass of uh, soil moving down slope, it is pretty phenomenal. Yeah. And what I know of your research and what it's <clears throat> leading to is some of these things are heading towards pretty important Alaska infrastructure, like the only highway connecting interior Alaska to the North Slope. Yeah, they are uphill of the Dalton Highway. Some are. Uh, about 23 are uphill of the Dalton. Um, there's 43 that we map along the corridor, and there's some on the other side of the river. Um, and FDLA, which is the closest to the highway, is about, the last we measured in October, 32.3 meters from the highway. So it, can anything stop it? That's a good question. That's a million dollar question. Um, yeah, we have ideas of what to do to slow it down. So it's probably temperature dependent, so we could cool it. Uh, you could remove the water. There is, we think, liquid water at depth that's causing it to move so quickly. The question is, where's the water? And can you, could you either cool it or drain it before the um, tools that you use to do that break off? <clears throat> um, those are maybe the best ways to <laughs> slow it down, but, or move the infrastructure out of its way some way. Did they know about these things when they were building the road? They did. Uh, they mapped them in the 70s and 80s and um, the people who mapped them thought that they were inactive at that time. And to be uh, fair to them, we've done a historic analysis of them. They were moving. We, we've looked at historic imagery since 1955 and it shows that all of them have been moving since that time, but that many of them have sped up since then. So is your research just to let people know that this is coming, prepare for this, you need to think about this? Or is it like, we know we've got this, we've got this policymaker, no worries, science is on the job. <laughs> uh, we're learning as we go, I guess I should say. We, uh, my colleague and I started looking at these things in 2012, and we've learned so much since then. And uh, we're providing information as we learn uh, to both the Alaska Department of Transportation and Public Facilities and to Alaska Pipeline Service Company. So they are aware of the research, they know the rates, I give them update all the time. And that, this is, I'm going to ask this question, it's sort of a nightmare scenario, and you can please say if this is not something that you want to talk about or if your, or your science is not ready to talk about it. Does this threaten the Trans-Alaska Pipeline? Is there some sort of environmental danger with oil spill? I will leave that to Alyeska to say whether or not it's a threat to the pipeline. They, like I said, they're very much aware of the, the uh, debris lobes and their rates of movement. And um, I think they've got it, they've got a handle on it, you know, and they're, they're going to mitigate as needed. So I'll Thank leave you, that for I know them that to talk about. That's sort of a very, very like, <laughs> that's where science and policy really you know, yeah, the, I provide the, the rates. Yeah. <laughs> here's here's it's coming, just so you guys know. Yeah. Um, why uh, at UAF? You could probably do this research all over the world. Why do you choose to work on the Fairbanks campus, or at least be based there? Well, Fairbanks is a lovely place to live, and I've lived there for ah, 23 years now, so it's home. 
And you know what they say, Alaska doesn't grow on you, it makes you unfit to live anywhere else. So <laughs> maybe I'm stuck. <laughs> no, I, I know what you mean. It's been a long time that I've lived there too. Thank you very much for taking some time. I'm